Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning message for Valley Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Serrano. We're glad that you could join us this morning. Uh, we're going to be singing I Love to Tell a Story. If you know that, that hymn, would you sing it with us? Here we go. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, 
and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord God, that we can share your precious word through social media. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless your word, that it would travel to the ears and hearts that you wanted to go to. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would draw those that need to be saved, that you would draw them to yourself, Lord, that you have, would have mercy on them, Lord God, and forgive them of their sins, that they might be forgiven and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the believers that they will be strengthened and encouraged through your holy word. Father God, we are so grateful and we are so uh, privileged to be able to serve you, Lord. We love you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, God, guide us and lead us. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are in the book of 2 Corinthians, and the Apostle Paul is sharing, he is sharing uh, the ministry. He is sharing the ministry. He's speaking about the ministry uh, of reconciling and the ministry of reconciliation. And he says something uh, very interesting here. In uh, verse 13, he says, For whether we be, whether we, whether we be besides ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. The Corinthians considered Paul to be a man who was overzealous, even uh, beyond himself, besides himself, uh, even as uh, Governor Festus said, uh, Paul, you are besides yourself. Uh, they considered him to be a man who was just too given into uh, the things of God, and it was just so much for them to be able to accept that they literally considered Paul to be crazy. Okay? That's what it means in verse 13. For whether we be besides ourselves, whether we be crazy, we're crazy for the Lord. That's what he's saying right here. And he begins to share what God has done for him. And he says that the love of Christ makes him do what he does. He goes and plants churches. He preaches and teaches the word of God. And he begins to share with us what actually takes place in the life of a person. When a person recognizes their sinfulness. When a person repents of their sins. And calls on Jesus for salvation. He gives us the actual uh the actual accounts of what takes place in the life of that person, or any person for that matter, who repents of his sins. And he calls it, uh, that person, a new creation. Look at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The word creature there means creation. How can a person uh, be changed? How can a person be transformed? From being an alcoholic, to being a good father, to being a responsible person, to being a good husband. How can a person be transformed and change? The world will try to help that person. But the problem with the world's help is that the world doesn't understand spiritual things. And the problem with people is not that they're sick or that they have diseases. The problem with the people is sin and sin is a spiritual problem that has to be dealt with you can take a person to a medical center and you can treat him for several months and, and, and separate him from alcohol and you can give him classes on how to be more efficient how to be a better husband how to be a better father but as soon as he comes out from that medical center he's going to return to his sin what happened? Why couldn't the world help that person? Because the world cannot help you when it comes to spiritual things. The only thing that can help you when it comes to spiritual things is the Word of God. 
Jesus Christ, the living word of God, is the only one that can change you. He's the only one that can transform you. And Paul right here is sharing with us how he was transformed and because he was changed from being a persecutor of Christians to being a preacher of the word of God, he's sharing with us here that God makes him do what he does Though people consider him to be a crazy man, to be an overzealous man, to be besides himself. He says right here, verse 14, the love of Christ makes me do what I do. For the love of Christ, verse 14, constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. I do what I do because I love Christ, and because the love of Jesus Christ makes me Share the gospel with other people. It, it, it moves me, it guides me, and leaves me because I realize that Jesus died for all. And the reason that Jesus died for all men is because they were all dead. And, there, and Jesus died to save all men. Uh, that's what John 3, 16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus died for all. He says here in verse 13, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So now, if Jesus died for the entire world, those that believe in him, those that come to the point of repentance and call upon Jesus for salvation, and are given repentance, and are given salvation, those that are transformed into new creations, Paul is saying that those should not live for themselves. Verse 15, he's, now think about it with me. If you were convicted of a crime, and you were condemned of a crime, and you went to prison for that crime, and the day of your execution came, and a, 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 a man came, and before they uh, killed you and executed you, he took your place. How would you feel towards that man that took your place? Would you not be grateful to that man? Well, that's what he's saying right here. Because Jesus died for all, then those that have trusted Christ as their personal Savior, those that have repented, those that have received salvation, because you have been changed, because you have been transformed, then you should live your life for Jesus Christ. How could you repay what Jesus did for you on the cross? There isn't anything that you can do to repay what Jesus did for you on the cross. You, you, you can't die and save yourself. You, you can't give a large amount of money and compensate Jesus for dying on the cross for you. The point is that there is nothing that you can do to pay Jesus what he did for you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. But the life that you have now because of Jesus Christ, that life should be lived for Jesus Christ. Is that not a way to show your gratitude to Jesus and that he saved you? Do, does Jesus save a person so that that person can then go and live his own life? No. When Jesus saves a person, that person feels the constraining love of Jesus Christ to, to somehow do something uh, to, you can't pay back what Jesus did, but you feel such love that you want to do something for Jesus, and since you can't pay back, the least that you could do is live your life for Him. That's what He's saying right here in verse 15. And that He died for all, the day which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him. That you live your life for Him after you've been transformed, which died for them and rose again. And so, because Jesus died for us, those that are saved right now, those that are believers, should be living their lives for Jesus Christ. That's the way to show gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, what's the point of living? Jesus didn't save you so you can go and do your own thing. He saved you so that you can be his servants. And so, here in verse 16, here, um, he says, wherefore, henceforth, he says, okay, because of that, because Jesus died for me, and because I'm grateful to him, I'm going to live my life for him. Wherefore, 
henceforth. He is saying, because of that, from this moment forward, from the moment of your salvation, that's your henceforth, from henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Okay? And this simply means that because you have been transformed, because you have been made a new creation, you don't look at people the same way. That's what he's saying right here. A believer who has trusted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, who is assured a place in heaven, does not see people the same way again. Hence, wherefore, henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. We don't see people as as child as trees. We don't see people as just flowers. We don't see people as just the scenery. You see what he's saying right here? We don't look at people the same way anymore after the flesh. Why? Because we've been transformed and because we've been given the love of Christ and the light of the gospel has entered us, we are to share that light with others. Therefore, we don't look at people the same way anymore. Now, we look at people the way Jesus looks at people. People who are in, in their sins, on their way to hell, who need help, who need somebody to share the gospel with him. That's how we look at people now. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Look at this now. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. And here, what he's simply saying is this. When the Messiah came, we saw him after the flesh. In other words, we saw him as our conquering prince, as our king coming with an army. That's how we saw Jesus Christ out of the flesh. But we don't see him like that anymore. That's what it means. We don't see him like that anymore. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. We don't look at Jesus after the flesh. We don't think of Jesus in the same way that we originally thought of him. We thought of him as a king coming in power to deliver us from the Roman army. That's seeing Jesus after the flesh. We don't look at him no more like that. He's our savior now. And we don't look at people the same way anymore because we've been transformed. And because we have trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God has made us and created us anew. That's what verse 17 says right here. He says, therefore, therefore, because of all these things that I've been telling you, therefore, if any man be in, keyword, I am, in. Are you in or are you out? I didn't say, did you go to church? I didn't say, have you been baptized? I didn't say, do you live a good life? I didn't say, are you generous? I didn't say, are you a good person? No. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you repented of your sins? Have you recognized your sinfulness? Have you agreed with God that you're a sinful, wicked, vile sinner? Has there been a change in your life? If there hasn't been a change in your life, there's nothing new. Because when God saves a person, truly saves a person, there's a complete redo, there's a complete renew, there's a complete creation. And that's what God is saying right here, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, when a person recognizes, when a person agrees with God, I'm a sinner, I realize my sinfulness, yes, I'm a sinner, I'm agreeing with God, okay? And then I repent of my sins, and I turn to Jesus, and I call upon him to save me, according to Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of me, and God makes something new out of the old. Look at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The word creature means creation. That means that God comes inside of a person 
Listen, though that person be a drug addict, though that person be a prostitute, though that person uh, is an alcoholic and does drugs, or whatever the sin or wicked vileness, is, whether it be pornography, you, you fill in the blank. No matter what sins that person has committed, when Jesus forgives that person of their sins, they are made a new creation. They are made new. That's what the verse tells us right here. He is a new creature. God begins to do something beautiful inside of that person. And the changes that God does are from the inside out. Man tries to change himself, and he can't really change himself. He can change his clothes. He can change the color of his hair. He can go to the gym and work out. He can do a lot of things on the outside, but the inside remains the same. You have to be changed from the inside. This is what Jesus is saying right here, that you have to be changed from the inside. I was saved from the inside, and I was transformed from the inside on September 21st, 1997 in Japan. I was an alcoholic. I was a drunkard, okay? And I call upon the Lord Jesus after I realized my sinfulness, what a wicked person I was, what a bad husband I was, what a bad father I was, how I was tearing down everything that I touched or put my hands to, and, and, and I, I was hopeless, and I had nowhere to go except to turn to Jesus, and I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, and repentance came into my heart, and I, I needed to change, but I didn't know what to do, so I called upon Jesus, Jesus, please help me. I called upon Him, and He changed me, and He transformed me, and everything that was in this body that was wicked and vile, he started taking it out. I didn't have to change. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to say, okay, uh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. Or I can't do that. It doesn't work like that. Jesus just begins to transform you. And you become a new creature. And everything is forgiven. All the sins you have committed are forgiven. When you repent of them and turn to Jesus... You are forgiven. And Jesus makes of you a new creation. All things are passed away. Jesus will never remind you of your sins ever again. They are forgiven and forgotten. And he says, behold, all things have become new. Everything's new for you. Whatever age you are. I was 38 years old. Listen to me. I, I'm glad that I was 38. And I'm glad that I wasn't older. And I, I'm glad that it wasn't too late for me. And the point is this, it doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're a young person, a, 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 a teenager, a young adult, a senior citizen, it doesn't matter what age. When you repent of your sins and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, He will save you. He will not reject you. He will never turn you away. This is what Paul is telling the Corinthian church right here. The things that I do, I do because uh, 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 the love of Christ constrains me. The love of Christ makes me do what I do. You think I'm crazy, but I am uh, sharing with you what Jesus did for me in my life. And all things are of God who are reconciled unto himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, once a person has repented of their sins and received Jesus as a personal Savior, he is transformed he is made into a new person, and Jesus gives all believers the ministry of reconciliation. The, 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 the word reconciliation means to bring two parties together. We have God who is the offended party. What offends God? Sins. Our sins offend God's. And Jesus came... And he paid for those sins on the cross. And when those sins were paid for the entire world, now God and man can be reconciled. That's what Jesus did when he was here on the earth. That's what the Bible says right here, verse 19. To wit, which means that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, 
And they committed unto us the word of reconciliation. In other words, God was not imputing their sins unto them. In other words, God was not condemning people. Listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, here in verse 19, Christ did not impute their trespasses unto them, but he reconciled God and man. And because we have trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior, and because we have been transformed and made into a new person, now we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Believers, every believer everywhere who has repented of his sins and received Christ as their Savior are ambassadors. They don't look at people the same way. They see people as lost on their way to hell. And this brings compassion upon your heart to share the light of the gospel with them. This is what uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number uh, 5. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus Christ. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. You see that God shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the light shining to us when we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the light of God shine in our hearts. And now that we have been transformed, we're supposed to give out that light. We don't keep it to ourselves. We give it out. And this light here, the light of the gospel, is called a treasure. The gospel is a treasure. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The light has come, and we are to reflect the light. Therefore, God has sent us as his ambassadors. What is an ambassador? He's a representative of a king. We are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our king. He's our prince. And we represent him. And when we go and tell others, we don't go and condemn them. No, we give them the gospel light. We give them the truth of the gospel. He says in verse 20, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We go in the place of our king. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. What does that mean? To be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. It means this. If Jesus Christ was right here, he will go himself. That's what it means. But because he's not here right now, and, and physically, we are going for him. We are going in his place, in his stead. That's what it means. We pray you in Christ's stead. We come to you in the place of Jesus, and we want you to be reconciled to God. That's what we are. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. For he, verse 21, had made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. For he, God, had made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that, what, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a trade. What a trade. Jesus, who had no sins of his own, is crucified on the cross to pay the penalty for my sins. And in return, God gives me the righteousness of his son and places it on me. And Jesus takes my sins on the cross. What a trade. What a trade. And because of that, we are made righteous in the sight of God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. My friend, God can transform you. God can make you into a new person 
any person, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you are, God knows exactly where you are at. And if you would humbly, if you would humbly come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness of your sins, acknowledge your sin, agree with God that you're a sinner, and come to Him humbly and ask for forgiveness. And then ask Jesus to come and be your Savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus will turn no one away. He can make you into a new person. Listen, people are dying every day and going to hell for all eternity. We need the light of the glorious gospel, believers, to go out. All believers, the light is shining in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of Christ. We need to give it out. Don't block out your lights. You need to give out the light of the gospel so that others can hear Jesus is coming back soon. We need to stand before Jesus Christ and give account of our lives. Don't be going before Jesus Christ regretting things that you didn't do when you had the opportunity. Go willingly. You have nothing to lose and you have all to gain. Don't be afraid. Paul says, yeah, I'm crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. It doesn't matter what people say about you. Just go and give the light and don't delay. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the precious light of the gospel, which is shining our hearts. Oh, Lord, we so desperately need to give out that light. I pray for every born-again believer, Lord God, that you would constrain them with your love, Lord God, according to that holy word, that they would go out and shine the light, Lord God, that millions of light would shine in this dark, dark world, that others might come to Jesus and be forgiven of their sins. We know that this is your desire, Lord, for you're not willing that any should perish. Father God, bless your holy word as it goes out. And we thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We love you, Abba. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.